Today we're going to talk about the most overlooked number in your blood test and why it matters more than you think. So let's kind of start with in our imagination. So imagine you're standing on a field, right? And someone is throwing darts at you. Imagine, right? So now some darts are really big and heavy and others are much smaller, faster. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much metal is inside each dart. It's the number of darts flying at you that decides if you get hurt or not. Now, this is how heart disease works. We've been told for decades to watch our LDL cholesterol, the amount of cholesterol inside those particles, but the actual damage to your arteries isn't about how much cholesterol each particle is carrying. It's about how many particles are hitting your artery walls every second. Now that dart count has a name and it's called apolipoprotein B or APOB for short. So what does APOB actually measure? So think of APOB as a particle counter, right? For all the dangerous cholesterol carriers inside your blood. Now these carriers are called lipoproteins. They're tiny little packets made of fat and protein that move cholesterol and other fats through your bloodstream. Now there are three main ones that matter for your heart risk. First of all, there's the LDL, that's the low density lipoprotein, often called the bad cholesterol. But LDL is really the vehicle carrying the cholesterol into or to the artery walls. Then you have VLDL. Now this is very low density lipoprotein. Now this transports triglycerides and that's a type of fat from your diet or made by your liver and can turn into LDL in your blood. Next, you have your LP little a or lipoprotein A. Now this is your genetic form of LDL that's stickier and more likely to cause clots. And this was a dangerous one. So every single one of these particles carries exactly one ApoB molecule, like a unique serial number stamped on the outside. So if you count the ApoB molecules, you'll know exactly how many atherogenic particles are circulating. So what does atherogenic actually mean? That means able to cause atherosclerosis. That's the slow buildup of plaque inside your arteries that can block blood flow and cause heart attacks or strokes. So let's talk a little bit now about the LDL particle size, because this is kind of a hidden factor. So here's where people get kind of tricked by, let's say a normal LDL cholesterol number on their blood test. So LDL-C or LDL-C tells you how much cholesterol again is inside all the LDL particles combined, but it doesn't tell you how big these particles are. So if your LDL particles are large and fluffy, you can carry the same LDL cholesterol with fewer particles. That makes sense. Bigger trucks carry more load. Now, if they're small and dense, right, you need more particles or more trucks to carry that same cholesterol load. So very important here. More particles equals higher ApoB equals more darts hitting your arteries, your artery walls. Now it's kind of like having a schoolway or a hallway full of kids, rowdy kids, right? So the LDLC cholesterol tells you the total weight of the backpacks crammed in the hall, but the ApoB, now that tells you how many kids are actually crammed in the hallway. So which tells you more important, really, which is more important for hallway safety? Right, exactly, the ApoB. So small, dense LDL particles, particles <laughs> are also more likely to slip into the arterial wall and get stuck, right? And then that makes plaque formation easier. Now, the small particle pattern is especially common in insulin resistance, right? Prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, postmenopause, which is why ApoB is often, or ApoB often shows higher risk than when LDL or when your LDL cholesterol actually looks okay. So why does the ApoB beat LDL cholesterol for risk detection? So think about it again, plaque formation in your arteries isn't magic, it's mechanics. So each particle is like that dart, remember that we talked about, bouncing along your artery wall. So the more particles, the more likely one will slip through that protective layer, get stuck and start the slow buildup of plaque. You could have okay cholesterol levels, but still have a sky high particle count. And that same heart attack risk is, is, is the same with someone with a high cholesterol on paper. So let's talk a little bit about where we need to be thinking about our APOB goals and some risk zones. 
So the, here are some of the targets to aim for. Number one, if you have no heart disease, what would be optimal is less than 80 um, milligrams per deciliter of your ApoB. Next would be optimal if you have a high risk or have heart disease or diabetes. That would want to be less than 65 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Some experts are even saying less than 50. So here are some of the risk zones that you might be now. So if you're borderline, let's say 80 to 109, that's above optimal, right? So these particles are high enough to slowly cause artery damage. So you'll really want to act now to get them into that green zone. Now, if they're super high, greater than 110, this is what we call significantly elevated, right? So this is strong, strongly linked to plaque buildup and cardiovascular events, and this needs immediate attention. So here are a few other clues on your lipid panel, your non-HDL cholesterol, right? That's your total cholesterol minus your good cholesterol, your HDL, and you want to aim for 100, less than 100 um, optimally, or less than 80 if you're at high risk. Then you have triglycerides. Um, these are the fats in your blood. Ideal is less than 100, and I'm going to be doing another video about triglycerides really soon. There also is your triglyceride slash HDL ratio. So this is triglycerides divided by your good cholesterol. So you want that ratio to be less than two, and that usually means lower insulin resistance. And then you have your LP little a. Again, you just want to check this once in your life, and if it's high, lowering your ApoB is even more urgent. So I really want to just also speak kind of to the audience that relates to me because I am a midlife woman. <laughs> um, why do we really need to be paying attention to this? Well, estrogen helps keep cholesterol particles lower and artery walls healthier. So when your estrogen drops in perimenopause and in menopause, ApoB often rises even if your weight and your LDL cholesterol do not change. So that's why this number is such a critical early warning system for women who are in their 40s and their 50s and beyond. So how do you lower your ApoB? Well, here's some proven levers for you. Number one is nutrition. So think of fiber as like a particle broom for your arteries. Viscous fiber like oats, beans, and lentils form a gel in the gut that traps cholesterol and carries it out of the body. Next, you have nuts, soy, and plant sterols, which help the liver pull cholesterol out of cholesterol. And you wanna get these from whole foods. You do not wanna use plant sterile supplements. That's a whole nother story, but use the whole plant food. Next is you really want to minimize saturated fats, which are found in fatty meats, butter, cheese, and coconut oil, and ultra processed foods that raise your VLDL, right? That's kind of baby LDL cholesterol and triglycerides, which are those fats in your blood. Two is body composition. You want to shrink the visceral fat, that, that fat that's wrapped around your internal organs, and build muscle because the visceral fat increases ApoB and inflammation. And then muscle acts like a glucose sponge, right? And that also lowers your triglyceride-rich particles. And if you need medication, so be it. Um, you really want to pay attention to this because medications plus lifestyle are very strong together. I'm not saying you should be only doing medication or medication is the only answer. I'm just saying sometimes you need to be on medications to completely lower your risk. One, you have statins that lowers your LDL particle production. Um, you also have something called Zetia um, or Zetamibe that blocks cholesterol absorption inside the gut. And then you have your PCSK9s. Those are the newer ones on the block. This is for a really high risk or maybe a higher LP little a, and they supercharge the liver's ability to remove LDL particles. And of course, lifestyle in general, better sleep, lower stress, and daily movement will lower triglycerides and improve your particle uh, profiles. So again, the bottom line is ApoB is like a traffic counter for dangerous particles in your bloodstream. And if LDL cholesterol is the weight of the cargo, your ApoB is the number of trucks barreling down the highway towards your arterial walls. And if those trucks are small and fast instead of big and slow, right, there will be more of them and they'll be harder to stop. You won't judge road safety by the average cargo weight, right? You look at how many trucks are speeding down towards the bottleneck. So your next blood test, don't ask about cholesterol. I would ask for your ApoB. So if you remember only one thing from this video, remember it's this, your LDL cholesterol is the weight of the cargo. The ApoB is the number of trucks smashing into your arterial walls. And the more trucks you have, the greater the danger, no matter what your LDL cholesterol says. 
I've also created a special worksheet for you guys. It's called the Your APOB Blueprint. All you have to do is click the link below, join Substack, where you can see the written form of this video, and you can download your, your worksheet today. On there, you're going to get a color-coded lab tracker, so you instantly know if you're in the green, yellow, or red zone. A four-week checklist that actually lowers APOB without guesswork. You're going to see your power food list and what you can swap in today. And you're going to get April B friendly recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that really make the science delicious. So hope to see you next time. And don't forget, click below, join Substack, and I'll see you on the other side. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis. Now, if you've ever taken a multivitamin, you've probably assumed it's giving you everything that you need. But the truth is most women's multivitamins are filled with nutrients that you're already getting from your food. While skipping the ones your body really needs to thrive. And that's where the For Her Essential System comes in. I co-created the For Her Essential System with Complement, a science-backed supplement system that provides the essential nutrients women need for optimal health. It's designed to support hormonal balance, energy, bone health, and much more, with just the nutrients we struggle to get without the unnecessary fillers. What sets the For Her Essential System apart is that it is specifically formulated for women with dosages based on the latest research, ensuring you get what you need. So you can thrive in everything you do, all day, every day. Now to learn more and try it for yourself, visit the link in the description below and use the code for an exclusive discount. Take control of your health with the nutrients that matter most.